All right, Tanya, let's talk a little bit about wildlife friendly garden. Okay. All right, so here's, I got a couple of questions for you about okay. that. What kind of wildlife can you attract in an urban setting? Well, when we think about wildlife in an urban setting, mostly we're trying to attract all different kinds of birds. Okay. Uh, anything from robins and mockingbirds to hummingbirds, but yeah. also butterfly gardening is very popular yes. and yes. gardening for bees, other pollinators, and even bats. Bats? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can build bat boxes. I'm seeing those all around town now, especially at Shelby Farms. Yeah. So how about that? Okay. So how do we attract these species to our own properties though? Well, they all need food, water, and shelter, just okay. like people. Right. So uh, you can go a long way to providing that habitat with the plants that you put into your yard. And then you can supplement with also um, things like bird baths and other mm -hmm. ways to get water into your yard and um, bird feeders, that type of thing. Okay. So speaking of bird feeders, how do you attract the birds? Okay, well, before we think of feeder, let's think of first using plants. Ah, okay. And you want to use your entire yard. So not only are you going to plant just understory or maybe just nut trees, but you want to plant different levels. So your main larger trees like oaks mm -hmm. and hickories, and then you want to plant something in the understory. It could be dogwoods all the way down to your perennials because different species of birds utilize different heights of trees. So some like to stay high up in the canopies, others like to perch and nest closer to the ground. Mm -hmm. So you think about the whole uh, vertical thing that you have to work with in your yard. And it's not just right there on the ground. Now for trees, you need to plant things that uh, have nuts or fruits that they can eat, okay, like sure. um, American holly, American beech black gums, crab apples, um, okay. flowering dogwoods, hawthorns, hickories, oak trees for mast. Okay. But you don't want to only plant deciduous trees because they need thermal cover in the winter to keep them warm. Uh -huh. So you want to plant some evergreens too okay. to keep them warm in the winter. For shrubs, you can do things like common juniper that has berries and hollies, pyracantha, yeah. spice bush, sumac, any kind of sumac, viburnum has a berries they can eat okay. and then for vines um, trumpet honeysuckle trumpet creeper virginia creeper wild grapes american bittersweet so there's lots of things you can plant for them to eat wow and then you can also supplement with um, your bird feeders a lot of things like to eat sunflower seeds sure. fragile sunflower seeds sure. Um, you can also use fresh fruits uh, that you might have left over maybe they're starting to go um, there's a lot of birds that like to eat uh, orange slices, apple slices, <laughs> pieces of banana, you can just leave right. them on the ground or for them and they'll come and eat and those. They come get them. Okay. And then some bird species really like suet. Oh, so yeah. you can buy or make suet mm -hmm. and especially woodpeckers and chickadees. Okay. And your mockingbirds and robins like the fruit. Okay. Now what exactly is suet? Well, um, it's usually sold in cakes where you can make it. It's made out of fat product okay. um, mixed with usually peanut butter or oats and oh. some seeds and stuff in there. There's lots of different suet recipes on the internet that okay. you can look up or you can just buy it um, at the store. Okay, I've seen it at the store. Mm -hmm. Okay, wow. The birds are eating it all, huh? Yeah. yeah. Fruits and vegetables that are <laughs> high in vitamins and nutrition. How yeah. about that? Yeah, different birds like different foods. Ah, good mm -hmm. stuff. All right, so what can we plant to encourage the butterflies though? I mean, because that's big now. Yes, We want to attract those butterflies in. Well, you have to think uh, two different ways for butterfly gardening. You need to plant something for the larval stages uh, to eat, right. the caterpillars. Good point. Yeah. And caterpillars are very, very particular about what they will eat. So different caterpillars will eat different foods. Um, so if you're trying to attract monarch butterflies, mm. then you have to plant milkweed because that's the only thing that they'll eat is milkweed. Okay. So um, you can also plant for zebra swallowtail pawpaws. They like young yeah. pawpaw trees. Um, and then our eastern black swallowtail larva, they like things in the carrot family. So okay. carrot, dill, parsley, parsley. celery, and they are voracious eaters. <laughs> Would you know that from experience? <laughs> yes, <Tanya? laughs> yes, yes. They can clear out some parsley real, real fast. But if you're trying to attract them, you know, maybe make a space specifically for them, you know, to eat okay. what you plant. So okay. it, it's really inexpensive to buy herb seeds and plant for them. Now for the, their adult stage, mm -hmm. they drink nectar. And so there's a lot of plants we can put in our yards for the nectar. Okay. And not only the butterflies, but also hummingbirds are okay. gonna be attracted to these nectar plants too. Okay. Things like aster, azalea, bee balm, um, butterfly bush, of course the milkweeds, they like all kinds of clover, columbine, which is good for shadier yeah. spots. 
um, cone flower, lobelia, phlox, also good mm -hmm. for shade. So you can butterfly garden if you even if you have some shade. Salvia, wajila, and zinnia. Zinnia is super easy to grow from seed. Yes. I grow that yes. some of that every year. So okay. those are some plants for your butterflies. That's some good stuff, Tanya. Uh, so. And of course, if people want to plant these plants for their butterflies, they're easy to maintain for the most part? Yes, and okay. readily available. Yeah, phlox okay. and salvia, zinnia, those are easy things, yes. Okay. And you may even have a, uh, azalea in your yard already, so who right. knows? And most people do. Yeah. Most people do. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah, good stuff. Now, how about this next question? Attracting bees, right? Mm -hmm. Bees are popular as well. You know, we have a large beekeeper society here yes. uh, in Memphis, mm -hmm. and you hear more and more people are interested in bees. Uh -huh. So how do we attract the bees? Well, they like yards? some of these same nectar plants, okay. any kind of plant, but they really like um, blue and yellow flowers, according ah. to the research. Okay. So they're mm -hmm. attracted to those, but I mean, they'll love your zinnias, any, any kind of color that, that they can get. Right. So uh, plant, for your uh, bees in that way. And also, if you wanna have a place for them to lay eggs so that mm -hmm. you get more bees in the future, your solitary bees are the kind that they don't have a big hive where they lay all their, their eggs. Okay. Your solitary bees um, will use things like hollowed stems from hydrangeas or yeah. brambles, okay. If, okay. as long as you don't prune them all the way back. So okay. leave hollow stems when you have them uh, for them to use to lay their eggs in. And you can also buy those bee motel things. Yeah, I've but seen those. <laughs> the only thing, though, is you have to be prepared to throw those away after a year or so because um, you don't want that many bees and a different species living that close together because okay. um, disease problems can be uh, come up with that. Sure. But you can make your own little nesting place for your bees if you have a wooden block, three to five inch thick wooden block, and you drill holes about three quarters of an inch apart anywhere from an eighth of an inch in diameter to five sixteenths of an inch diameter, and you drill 90% of the way through that block, that three to five inch block, and they will come along and um, lay their eggs. How about that? And they'll seal off, they'll lay an egg, and they'll put bee bread in there that they make out of like pollen and nectar and uh, for the egg when the larva hatches for it to eat. And then um, they'll seal that off, and then they'll just lay several in a row in those channels that you, uh, drilled out so those are but you want to hang that from like the under the eave of your house okay. or under the eave of your shed and not in direct sunlight okay, so you can provide direct. a home for them now for um, birds there's all different kinds of bird boxes that you can make or buy but different kinds of birds are very specific about the size of hole the entrance mm. hole in the boxes um, so you probably need to go online and um, look for exact dimensions on bird boxes Tell you, we can tell you're passionate about that. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's some good information, mm -hmm. some stuff I didn't even yeah. know myself. So thank you much for that information. And we hope more people will actually garden for wildlife. Mm -hmm. So thank you much. Thank you. Right. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. To find out more information on this topic, just click on the familyplotgarden.com link in the description.